Hello, it's Jimmy here at O'Reilly's. Just got here to look at now Range Rover Evogue 2014. Okay, let's start it up. Keys missing. Okay, that's the message we have there. Exhaust filter full. So the engine management light is on. We're getting exhaust filter full message and red triangle there. Restricted performance. Okay, the OBD socket is down here. Let's uh, plug it in. Okay, so we're in. Let's run a scan. When we do a smart detection, let's just look at the ECM. It's going to be quicker. We've got too many too many uh, different areas to search there. Uh, manifold, pressure, airflow correlation, so boost leak, very common on these. This is a 2.2, so in my opinion the better engine. Excessive flow detected EGR, mass airflow circuit range performance, turbo supercharger performance, so we've got a fair few different codes. Forward air, Another four there. Diesel particle filter regeneration, O2 sensor. Hmm. Right, well. Got circuit issues as well, have we? Uh, well, historic. Exhaust casters. So this is the main thing. We're gonna look at this now, find where the leak's coming from, and maybe clean the DPF. Let's look at the data stream. Can we go there? No, it's not working. Let's go to here. Look at the soot. And differential pressure. Ooh, that is high. 70 millibars at idle, which is very high for one of these. Soot. 35 grams so let's open the bonnet and have a look at what's going on okay bonnet's up so this is the 2.2 one yeah so bit of a better engine looks like we've got wet oil residue here definitely got oil oh everywhere it's all wet across here might need to get the engine cover off and see what's going on. Where have we got? Oh, well, would you look at that? That's a big gash. Okay, so what that is, is that's the inlet hose, that's why it's spraying across here, that's the inlet hose from the turbo, so from the intercooler, back to the inlet of the intake manifold. Now that's, that's obviously gone, gone, kaboom, or whatever the word is, it's actually blown right in, a, it's not just a small little, little hole there, it's a, it's a massive one. So we're going to need to get a new pipe for that. Uh, Get that fixed on and then we can possibly clean the DPF. Look at the oil, it's everywhere. It's all over this as well. Okay, just about there we have a 7mm Jubilee clip. And I can see down there, right over there, you can see just about down there the other end of that pipe. Where there's another 7mm on that, we'll get it open. Okay, that's the old pipe out. So it's very difficult for me to record it, I had to reach my arm all the way down there, basically, open the two 7mm mil mils there to, just to get it off. So you can get a closer look at how big that hole was. Now, I've managed to pick up one of these from Bedford Land Rover. That's the part number there. So I'll get this fitted on now. Okay, so new boost pipe there back in place and you can see I just had to reach my arm down there it's very difficult for me to 
record that but basically have my hand down there you know tightening up both of those seven mil jubilee clips there right now to clean the dpf on this car i'm going to use this kit from launch uk which is the gun here and the fluid that we fill it up with now this gets connected up to my compressor at 131 psi just about half fill that bottle with, with the fluid and we'll top it up with some water okay i'm under the car here's your dpf right here i'm gonna follow these tubes back up so we've got one that ends here after the dpf and then over here we've got one that goes into the front so we're gonna follow that tube back and we'll get that opened off from here a little bit easier on these than the 2.2 it's a bit further up on the 2.2 so we've got that off now, we need to get this off, is that loose? Uh, it looks quite loose, it's already turning so it's not going to be too difficult to remove, there we go. So I've connected up my nozzle from my gun here, straight onto that pipe, and we can now squeeze the trigger. Get that fluid pushed into the DPF. That goes right up there, you see there. That's it now, I've disconnected that. Give that a minute just to settle down so there's no more fluid coming out. Now I can close back up those tubes. Okay, back in the car, start the engine up. Hold the revs up. And we just watch that pressure. Should have got it on a graph, really. It's a bit easier to watch. So, we want to see that pressure coming down ideally around about 50 or 60 millibars, maybe even less. They usually come down 30 40 millibars. We are down there now to 50 millibars. Let the engine idle down. We have zero millibars at idle there. Now if we come back here you can see the soot concentration there, you can see that's reducing so that should come back down close to zero now soon so now we're going to come to special function and exhaust emission we're going to calibrate the dpf by telling it it's at a new one because now the DPF pressure is safe to do this. If you do this with a, with a block DPF, it is dangerous. So make sure you know what you're doing before you do this. Now it's gonna clear the fault codes. So we'll go ahead and do that as well. Most of these fault codes are just gonna be triggered off because of all this, this, error, error, this errors that were going on because of the boost holes that was split. Okay, now that's all done. Okay. Okay, now we currently have no DTCs in the car, so we're going to take it for a little drive around, make sure that nothing else comes back. If something else does come back, obviously those items, extra items, are going to need looking at. But the DPF and boost pressure and the EGR, I'm pretty sure, is going to be finished now because of this repair that I've done here. So the cause of the DPF blockage is the boost holes. Once the boost holes is gone, then the, the regenerations shut down and your DPF starts blocking up. So let's take it on a little drive now. So we can see now if we put our foot all the way down, boost is back, acceleration is back. Okay, back from the test drive, we have the EGR valve fault back there, PO406-77. So it's likely going to need a new EGR valve. Um, 
it's in a really difficult place on these cars. Uh, we'll get the bonnet back open and I'll show you. Okay, so just here you have the EGR pipe, but that runs down the back of the engine and it's right down there. Okay, now, so for this car, um, just be honest, I'm not going to be interested in fitting that EGR valve here on the side of the road. It's a, it's a difficult job to do, uh, and I'll be honest, if it was my car, EGR valves, I don't see a use for them on a diesel engine that already has a particle filter. If it was mine, I'd get that EGR map deleted. Uh, I, it's probably surprising for, for for some people to hear for me to say that, but EGR valves, in my opinion, all they do is just destroy diesel engines, putting the soot back into the inlet manifold, into the turbo, and just slowly killing the vehicle over time. Um, your exhaust gases are captured, and the soot's captured by the DPF anyway, so it's a pretty pointless item on a car apart from slowly killing it so I mean you could go down the route of replacing the EGR which I'm not sure how much it's going to cost I wouldn't be surprised if it was above 500 pound but I'd just go with having a, a, an EGR delete on this vehicle if it was mine so we'll have a chat with a customer see what he wants to do if he wants to get it replaced or have it deleted but uh, I'm gonna send that over to my friend's garage and get that done I literally have no time for it I've got a DPF to clean every two hours for the next six weeks. So the EGR, I'm not interested in. I am, like I said, yeah, best option anyway is just get it deleted. So we'll remove my diagnostic machine out. Let's start the engine back up there. As you can see that EGR fault isn't given an engine management light or it's not causing any driving issues. So I said we found the cause of the DPF blockage there and fixed that. Now, I will recommend that he gets that EGR valve sorted out soon because I'm not sure if that's going to affect his DPF in long term again or not. One more thing I will add is about regarding, I get a lot of questions and comments regarding DPF deletes and EGR deletes. I don't see the point of del deleting a DPF because a DPF is never the problem. I've said that before in videos and people are talking, what are you talking about? Of course the DPF is the problem. The DPF is just an aftermath of a problem somewhere else and what people can do is they'll get a DPF problem it's like this one go in and ask for someone to delete the DPF they delete the DPF and their car is still running like crap because the problem is still there they've still got a boost leak so if your DPF's blocked it's just telling you that your car isn't running right get your car running right and your DPF will be fine but in regards to the EGR I just don't see a use for them on cars all they, all they do is just put this soot back into your engine your car is going to run better without it in my opinion um, I've got a couple of my cars I'm going to do it to my van my van's getting its EGR deleted I should have done it when it was brand new besides waiting for this mileage the EGR cooler on my van has started to block up so that's I'm going to just map that out that EGR valve the, I've also got a discovery I'm going to delete the EGR on that as well before it starts messing up the throttle body on that um, I've got a Volvo as well, I'd probably like to delete the EGR on that also. I made some videos recently trying to clean the inlet manifold and clean the EGR on it with a hydrogen machine that didn't work. I sprayed some cleaners in which made it better but they don't ever get it clean. Although it is working, it's working fine. The Volvo's done 210,000 and it's it's absolutely running perfect still. So I'm all finished on this Evogue and I'll see you on the next video.